Hey booktube, this is day 17 of the Advent Unwrapping and Weekend Reads. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks and I'm actually going to talk about all the audiobooks that I listened to last week. Uh, I didn't have a chance to wrap things up on Friday for Friday Reads. So I have a lot of books to tell you about and then I have six books to open for the Advent Unwrapping because I've been saving them up so that I can open them while I'm with you. Okay, so last week I read uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books, but you know, we're already at Sunday, so a couple of them I've finished in the meantime. So I'll start with The Divide. This is by E.J. Mello. Uh, it is not available on audio, so I read it as an ebook, and it is book two in the Dreamland series. I ended up giving this three stars. I think this series is good. I don't think it's outstanding, but I definitely think it's worth the read. So um, it's kind of a urban fantasy in that a girl goes to another world when she dreams, and that world is uh, in a kind of a symbiotic relationship with our world. So, um, yeah, the bad guys, the nightmares, everything's got to be handled and, you know, the war, and she's the chosen one. So, yeah, it's kind of got that special snowflake thing going on, but I like it. You know, I, I enjoyed it, and now I am midway through the last book. Anyway, okay, so then I picked up um, Doing It Over and Staying for Good. These are books one and two in the most likely two series by Catherine Bybee, and they are narrated on audio by Christina Panfilio. I really like Christina Panfilio. She's so good. She's just got this kind of a voice. It's a little bit husky, a little bit raspy kind of, but not much, just a tiny, tiny bit. So it really works for her to do a lower range male voice and then she can also pull off um, a little kid really well. She can also pull off um, like a side character that's like a valley girl. It's got kind of a little high voice, you know. She's, she just does it all really, really well. I think she is now one of my top favorite narrators. And when I rate a book on Goodreads, I will often, I have a, a shelf called Amazing Narrator. And I put her in as uh, that on these books because I was just so impressed. This series is about three friends who in high school were voted most likely to uh, go to jail, most likely to leave, most likely to, you know, become president. So um, it's these three women and there is a high school reunion in the town where they grew up and so uh, the first book is about one of them coming back. She was voted most likely to go to college and be successful. And she ended up having a baby, I think her second year of college. And so she dropped out and uh, the dad is kind of a deadbeat dad. And so it's all about her. And then we have in book two, we have the one who was most likely to stay in the town. And she went off and became a celebrity chef. So it's about her romance with her high school sweetheart. And both these books have an element of suspense going on in that there is something happening where the police have to get involved and they have to track down who did it. So that spices it up a little bit. And these aren't overly graphic in terms of the um, steaminess. And I appreciate that a lot. So I liked them. I liked them a lot. I think the first, um, yeah, the first book, Doing It Over, was just tipped over into four star territory for me. It was the so high on the upper end of three stars that I thought, now I'm going to give that four. And Staying for Good was okay. I think because I had already read the first book, sometimes that happens with a series like this. You kind of get a feel for what's you know, the, the story is like, you know, the side characters, and it just wasn't as dramatic. And uh, it was pretty dramatic, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it, I knew that, that something like that was going to happen. So anyway, three stars for that one. Then I picked up Suddenly Engaged by Julia London. This is also narrated by Christina Traster. And 
This is book three in the series, and I picked it up because Lisa and I were going to read it together, and she said, oh, I found this book. Um, she always finds books on Kindle Unlimited. I do have Kindle Unlimited, and I've also just gotten Hoopla. I did. I already had it, and I didn't realize it, so oh my gosh, the audiobooks are just coming out of everywhere. <laughs> so um, Suddenly Engaged was so good. First of all, it was Christina Tracer, and it was the first book that I had read of hers that she narrated um, before I got into all these other books that she has been narrating. So uh, she narrated it, and she was fantastic. She was fantastic. I, I can't say enough about how fantastic that narration was. She just, she got all the characters right. She would phrase it really well. I never got pulled out of the story thinking, that's not how I would have said that. She just, everything was spot on. I just, it was flawless. It was a flawless narration. So really loved that and the story. This is all about a woman and her young, I think she's six, six-year-old daughter. And uh, it takes place at a, uh, in New York at a place called Lake Haven, which is kind of a vacation resort. And then you have the people that are year-rounders that live there all year round. And so she um, needs to raise her daughter and she's been living in New York City. And so she moves out to Lake Haven and becomes a waitress and moves into one of the lake cottages. Well, she moves in next to this guy that has gone through a terrible divorce and is just one of those, get off my lawn, don't talk to me, get out of my face, you know. This guy and his dog, and he just wants nothing to do with anyone. He builds furniture for a living. Well, this little seven-year-old girl gets sight of his, catches sight of his dog and crawls under the fence and go, comes over to see his dog. Well. When she comes out of the house, he sees her and she comes out on the porch and she's wearing, well, she has like glasses and pearly red hair. And then she's got on these little cowboy boots that light up. Okay, so this is the mental picture of what's happening. And so apparently she walks out and she stamps her feet so that her boots will light up. And then she crawls under the fence to come see the dog. And he's like, who are you and what are you doing here? Go home. And she walks up and she says, hi. And he doesn't respond. He just stands there and looks at her. And so she goes, hi. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, I could just see it in my head playing out. Just so funny. And the whole thing is like that. And he says, what's your name? And she says, Ruby Kokios. And he goes, Ruby Coconuts. And that becomes a joke throughout the entire story. It was delightful. It was so good. I ended up giving it five stars. I got to the end and I thought this was wonderful, just wonderful. So, so because that was book three, I went back and picked up book one, which is called Suddenly in Love. And it is also, all of these are narrated by Christina Panfilio. Her narration was great, but you could tell that this was the first book in the series and it wasn't quite as good. It was a, um, very eccentric artist who is struggling to come back home and admit defeat in becoming an artist in New York City. So she's come back home. She's working for her aunt who owns um, an interior design firm. And then there's this rock and roll star who she doesn't recognize. And so you have the quandary of how is he going to tell her? And if he does, is she going to love him for who he is really? Or you know, so that's the story and it's okay. It's not bad. I didn't like the side characters nearly as much in the first book as I did in the third. Well, yeah, because they're more developed in the third. So yeah, did I liked that one. Then I picked up book two. Oh, I gave Suddenly in Love four stars. And then book two is called Suddenly Dating. And that's all about two people who um, have two friends that are getting divorced. And uh, the woman is friends with the woman who's getting divorced and the guy is friends with the guy who's getting divorced from the other woman. Okay, so they don't know anything about each other. And this couple is, it's very, um, uh, it's a very difficult divorce in that they're, they hate each other and they just don't wanna do anything. And so they have this mansion on this lake at Lake Haven and they say, um, the one woman is, she's, um, 
quits her job and wants to write a book and the guy is building a business he builds bridges and so he's building this business and he wants to uh, have a place to land both of them want a place to land well these two people that are in this divorce tell them go ahead and use the house well they end up in the house together and so I don't know if that made any sense but anyway it's the story of their relationship and what happens and it's really interesting because it was one of those hate to love kind of things and a lot of pretending that went on and um you know you had some drama that was happening and it was just it was just good i really liked it again if i had not had the third book to compare then i probably would have liked it more because christina tracer was fantastic so i ended up giving that one four stars I finished The Replica Duology with Ringer by Lauren Oliver, and this is narrated from two points of view by Sarah Drew and Aaron Spencer. This is told, uh, this is difficult to explain also. There are two ways you can listen to this book, because in print, the book is, you, it's like this way, and this is one person's perspective, and then you flip the book over and you read this person's perspective so both books meet in the middle or both stories meet in the middle well on audio you can either listen to the whole thing all one person's perspective and then all the next or you can listen to alternating perspectives and the advantage with the alternating is that you never have to go back and relive the entire story again you get both perspectives as the story is happening so that's what i did i like this a lot I think it had a lot to say about the value of human life and um, what makes up a person. Um, there were several things that I liked about it. One of the things is that Lauren Oliver, while I don't always like her stories, I don't like always the arcs that the plot takes. You know, I don't like the direction sometimes. I love this woman's writing. She can write a scene, especially a romance scene or a love scene. It's never graphic because it's YA, but she can just write it so, so beautifully. It's just, the writing is gorgeous. So I fell back in love with that again when I read this book. It was a good ending to the duology. Um, I think it wrapped up all the loose ends, and I really liked it, actually, in the end. Um, uh, Sarah, Sarah Drew, I really like her. Um, she's an actor that gets the whole voice acting thing. She's, it translates really well. And Erin Spencer was good. She wasn't as good as Sarah Drew, but she was still good. And so the narration was really good. Really enjoyed that too. So I ended up giving that four stars. And I like that duology. I think if you like uh, kind of a sci-fi thing on cloning, you might really like that. And that was last week. So currently I am reading The Destined, which is book three in the Dreamland series by E.J. Mello. And then I started listening to The Darkest Sunrise by Ali Martinez. And it is narrated from two points of view by Kasha Kensington and Nelson Hobbs. I was talking with Lisa, who I am buddy reading this with, um, about the narration. And she and I both agreed that while we like the narrators, they are not stellar. We don't love them but they are good solid narrators so if i were to give them a rating like on a scale of one to five they would be a solid three definitely a solid three um they're doing a great job and i i think i've heard better narrators that's why i say that but um still really good ali martinez does a lot of drama with her stories and this is a lot of drama. It's a lot of personal heartbreak and two damaged people coming together. So they're trying to work out this romance and I'm about halfway through it and I do enjoy the story. I definitely will be reading the second book and I picked those up on Hoopla. I get like 25 books with Hoopla. It varies according to your library because it's attached to your library, but holy cow, that's a lot of books. I just feel like I've won the lottery. Okay, and now it's time to open some advent books. So here is day 15. That is not a book. That rattles. Oh, well, let's just find out what it is. It's from Karen. And it is 
These are hard to open. She wraps this really well. Okay. Sea Salt by the Sea Note Cards. She knows I love the beach. She knows I do. Oh, these are so pretty. Here are the designs. And you know, aren't these the greatest thing to have around? Because you always need to throw a card in something that you're sending. I send stuff to people all the time and I need a card, you know, just to throw in and say, here's the thing and, you know, you know, have fun with that and I love you and, you know, on and on. So uh, I just love when I have things like this around. So this is 20 cards and envelopes. Thank you, Karen. I'm going to have to send Karen something now that, and use the card. <laughs> okay, so, and Jenny, I think, has sent me a paperback. There's just a 15 on this one. Cake wrapping again. And let's see what it is. On the back, it says, Ciao, Bella. Okay, Flirting in Italian by Lauren Henderson. Oh, this will be good. This is probably YA Contemporary. Hot Italian boys, uh, wild American girls, and parties under the stars. A summer of love and mystery awaits Violet Rutledge in Tuscany, and she's over the moon with excitement. This should be good. I just love this kind of stuff. You know, uh, just the whole, yeah. I'll have to see if it's on audio, and if it is, I'll definitely listen to it. So thank you, Jenny. Okay, so that was day 15. Day 16. I'll start with Jenny. Um, this says, it's the thought that counts, right? Yeah, I love this shiny paper. You know, this year I got shiny paper from Dollar Tree, and I got several rolls of it, and I've wrapped everything in it. And the thing about shiny paper is that if you have to reposition like a bow or a, you know, tag or something, you, it's, it, the tape will pull off easily. So nice. Okay, what is this? Can you see it? Let's see, this is taped to the back. Okay. This Story Girl by L.M. Montgomery. Oh, wow. Huh. Is that, did she write Anne of Green Gables? Oh, yeah, okay, did I pick up, wait, I forgot to get the card out of the other one. Okay, so I'll do the cards both at the same time. This one, The Story Girl, Jenny says, this is one of my favorite books as a kid. It's by the same writer as Anne of Green Gables. I like this one even better, love Jenny. This is gonna be good because, well, it's so short. Gosh, is it even 100 pages? Uh, 99 pages, but oh my gosh, look at this text. <laughs> Talk about dense. Woo. Well, I'll have to see if that's on audio. Thank you, Jenny. That's really, actually, this is kind of wonderful. Okay, and there's the card. And I'm going to read the card from the uh, Flirting in Italian because I didn't read the card, did I? Oh, this one's pretty. It's shiny and it's pink. I love pink. This starts out as a cute summer story, but there is a lot more depth than I expected. And a mystery. I hope you like it. Well, I love it already, Jenny. I already love it. Okay, so that was Jenny Day 16. Now let's do Karen Day 16. And it's already... <laughs> I've been wrapping things and throwing them under there. Uh, that's why some of these are kind of starting to open up. The Charm Bracelet by Viola, Viola Shipman. Ooh, I love this cover. And I because I love charm bracelets. This says, uh, well, there's just all kinds of blurbs on the back. So I just from the look of it, I'm gonna say Amina. Amina. <laughs> that's that's uh, American shorthand for I'm going to. How do you get Amina from I'm going to? I don't know. Uh, this says a heartfelt story of love and forgiveness. This, this seems like women's fiction. Lose yourself to the magic of the charm bracelet. Through an heirloom charm bracelet, three women will rediscover the importance of family and a passion for living as each charm changes their lives. Wow. Oh, this is going to be good. Thank you, Karen. I just, these are the kinds of stories that are just wonderful. So, yeah. Save that for a day when I need uh, just, uh, you know, a little bit of romance, a little bit of heartfelt stuff yeah okay last day 
I'll open Karen's first because it says sign. She knows I love me a sign book. Oh, oh my gosh, it's Outlander. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I have read all of these books. I watch it on Stars. Um, my husband has really gotten into it. I mean, seriously gotten into it. And, you know, he doesn't, I don't think he realizes that I know the story and well, he kind of knows that. So I'll always go, well, I don't know what's, I know what's gonna happen because the uh, TV show follows these books really well. And uh, season one is all, it's this whole book. Season two is the next book and now we're in season three and it's the next book. So, oh my gosh, can't believe she got Diana Gabaldon on to sign that. Diana Gabaldon is a big deal. She is a very big deal, especially at um, book signing conventions. It's hard to get to her, and Karen is such a pro at that. So, wow. I'm kind of blown away, Karen. I'm, I'm not kind of. I'm very blown away. <laughs> this is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. And last one is from Jenny. Very shiny tree paper. I love this foil paper. December 17th, caution, this package may contain a fruitcake. I kind of doubt it. I kind of doubt it. Okay, let's just see what's in here. Gosh, oh, it's hard to open this foil paper. It doesn't want to tear. Okay. All right, do I have it? Yes. Oh, what I thought was true by Huntley Fitzpatrick. Oh, this is a great book. I listened to this and I really, really liked it. This is YA Contemporary. And the thing about Huntley Fitzpatrick's books is that the covers are so pretty because you put them on the shelf and look at that spine. Isn't that gorgeous? So, um, okay, Jenny said, ooh, bookmark, A Court of Mist and Fury. And all around us, as if the world itself were indeed falling apart. Stars rain down. Oh, what a pretty bookmark. Thank you, Jenny. Oh, I love these. Okay, she says, what I thought was true. I adored my life next door. This is a different storyline. One of these days, I'll read my copy. There we go. And I think this is going to be great. Well, no, it was. Wait a minute. You know what? I have not read this. I've read part of this but I haven't gotten all the way into it because I was not wild about the narration. Um, so um, it seems like I was gonna pick it up in print and I never did. So now I will have to. Thank you so much, Jenny. Okay, so man, was this a good day for opening books and getting books as presents. Oh, I love getting books as presents. In fact, um, I wrapped up my box of books from Book Outlet. I didn't open it. I just wrapped it. And I am going to open it on Christmas. So my kids are all going to go, ah, oh, great. Who sent you that? And I'm going to go, I sent me this. <laughs> it's going to be kind of funny. So here's today's haul of books. And that was my week last week. If you've read any of these books, of course, I want to talk to you about it. And I hope, whoops, I'm going to put these down. I hope you're having a great weekend. I hope you have a great week ahead, and I guess that's it for now until tomorrow when I will see you with another Advent Unwrapping. Thanks for watching. God is sending us a Savior, peace on earth.